Hey, welcome back my favorite spell casters of lead. I got another IR illuminator to test for you to see if it's actually worth your money. This one's interesting as it's not really riding that budget train like we've seen in a bunch of other illuminators lately. And it could be a newer and smarter alternative to the, the brick that is the D-Ball D2. The product we'll be looking at today is the all new Laser Speed LS M6TR IR illuminator. I'll tell you that there are some super smart things going on here that make the price a little bit less painful, but there are some aftermarket upgrades that I would really need to have in order for it to take my number one spot. And I'll say it's kind of funny because this unit is so bright. I think those YouTubers that are out there chasing like the brightest possible unit are probably gonna realize at this point that too bright is actually a thing. I'll show you, but first, let's take a moment. Thanks today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored in part by Optic Swap. In a world of shady dealings on marketplaces where you just get ripped off, Optic Swap provides you a safe and secure site to buy, sell, and trade your high end thermals, optics, and night vision. So, whether you're looking to save a bit on a used set or just purchase new or just upgrade your current inventory, Optic Swap has your back to provide safety and security to your purchase. So if you're looking to expand or trade out some of your high-end goodies without some turd on Facebook stealing all your money, make sure to check out OpticSwap to do it in a safe and secure way. Big thanks to OpticSwap for supporting this video, for supporting our whole firearms community, and for all the things they do for TLD. Now though, next, we have to talk about my biases. Now, LaserSpeed did provide me this unit for testing, and I don't really know them, nor have I worked with them, so I wouldn't really say I have any biases. I think by the time you're seeing this, there may even be a discount code. I don't know. If there is one, I'll put it somewhere over here and down in the description also. Regardless of that, and even though people get super butthurt in the comments, everything I say is just my own opinion. Nothing I say or any other YouTuber says should be taken as gospel. Make sure to do your own research so you are the most educated consumer possible. Forum R Ranch also did a great video on this M6TR that shows some long-term zero testing along with some issues he had along the way. We do the same tests for every product and every illuminator along the way, so I can't really taint it in any way, and the results are gonna be what the results are gonna be. So I don't even know how I would skew this if I wanted to. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is a unit where you actually get things so bright, it's almost unusable. I think a unit like this, like I kind of joke about it, is really gonna trip up those IR Illuminator YouTube reviewers that seem to wanna have an IR Illuminator that goes out to like 2,000 yards for their 100 yards of effective range. I don't know how you're expected to account for bullet drop with a huge bloom all over everything. I don't know, whatever. It, it probably looks really good on their Excel spreadsheet they planned it all out on though. I think some of those reviews are just they're just a little bit silly, but I'll show you how nuts this illuminator gets and you can determine if it's usable or not. But first, let's get it on the bench. Let me show you all the details about it. So here is the LaserSpeed LS M6TR. I'm not gonna say that much more. It's a bit of a mouthful. But the housing is fully aluminum with this matte black finish to give you a lightweight but sturdy unit. Let's dive in and first we see the activation push button on the top of the unit. The push button is nice and tactile to the touch to know you're in the correct position in the dark, but there are a few issues with this top button right off the bat. Number one, the button itself is kind of mushy and hard to actually activate. It works and it's fine, but I did find during a lot of my testing that it would flicker or just not stay on when I was trying to just hold this fire button down. It was easy to get around because you can just double tap this to get a constant on, but is it the best Fire button on the market? No. The second issue I found is the illuminator is fairly high. So the fire button on the top would have my thumb occluding most of the view, even with higher 1.93 mounts, meaning you'd need to be at least 2.2 to get over your own hand. But then at that height, you'd likely use some sort of mount and the touchpad. So the practicality of you actually using this fire button is, is pretty low. This behemoth of a touchpad also actually has one functional button. Also, I'll, I'll show you that when we get to controls. Now, one part that is awesome is the elevation and windage on the side of the unit. Here we see a slotted design that doesn't need any specialty tools, so you can use a flathead, but really a, a coin just works fine. After doing so much night vision stuff and so many different illuminator reviews, it's baffling how many of these illuminators require some sort of tiny special tool I swear most of these companies 
never even bothered to use their own products because a lot of times you have to go and do these small adjustments with these specialty tools in the dark, like these tiny screws that need specialty tools with no clicks at all on the designate IRV can be insanely frustrating. That's like a $2,000 unit too, but okay, but the fire button on that one is actually awesome. The laser speed also has almost no slot between the elevation and windage settings, giving you a tactile and audible sound as it adjusts 0.25 mils on each click. This part is amazing because it seems like they've just stomped some high-end units with some total ass elevation and windage, and I'm really liking what they're doing here. Moving to the front of the unit, we see a battery compartment for a standard CR123. With the compartment facing forward, it also makes for easy battery changes without removing the unit. Small caveat to that though, if you have the illuminator placed more rearward so you can actually press the fire button, then the battery compartment is much harder to access due to the cover being a challenge to now grab hold of. Plus you can't see anything when pressing that button anyway, so just, just push it back forward. To the side of our battery compartment, we have our cover of our laser and illuminator. The cover is moved over to the side for operation, but also has a plug installed for illuminator operation only if you want to leave it on and take out the plug. I don't know exactly why you'd want to look at things but not aim at them. I'd want to have the opening over the laser and not the illuminator, but hey, but hey, I, I'm not a level 100 wizard, so maybe I don't know. Now, something unique here is that we see our IR laser, Viz laser, and illuminator all slaved together as one unit. So your elevation and windage adjusts all three. Now, I was a bit skeptical of this because I've seen some PEC 15s that are wildly off, that have like the IR laser here and the illuminator's like off on another planet. But in my testing, I saw these were co-aligned so insanely well that you can actually narrow down the illuminator beam to make the laser and the illuminator basically one. And I found this to be really impressive. I never really found out what that feature would be useful for outside of showing me it has good alignment. So yeah, the alignment's good. Now, one thing to note is that the Viz laser is going to be slightly off from the IR laser, obviously, because they're, they're not in the exact same space because you can't be inside of one another. So your Viz laser is gonna be off your IR. I just do an infinite zero by looking through the optic with nods on and use the IR laser when I configure my setups. I think the infinite zero is stupid easy, but whatever you do, just make sure to be consistent across all your illuminators and all your setups so that you have the same offset on every platform. Moving to the rear, we see a slot for our crane plug, and there is actually an included tape switch I mentioned earlier that comes with a unit that you can connect in here. Okay, is the tape switch awesome? No. Is it better than the top fire button? <laughs> yes. The switch has this super sloppy top and bottom area of the main button that just feels like a, I don't know, empty plastic sock. The middle section has the actual switch and at least halfway works. Thankfully though, as we move up, we have this small tactile button that actually works great. So I'd only use this and ignore the other 90% of this push button. Both buttons also have the same functionality, so it doesn't matter which one you use either. Why have two different buttons that do exactly the same thing? That's a fantastic question. Like really, why not make one of them like constant and one of them momentary? <laughs> Whatever, no, they don't do that. You can connect the tape switch with the included Picatinny mount or use the included hardware to use M-Lock along the sides or even just tape the switch down with the included hook and loop if the handguard doesn't have either of those options. So there are a lot of different ways to connect this up, but it's super large and really, really not all that great. So if I went this route, I would have to prioritize a different switch because yeah, this is just, this is huge and mostly unusable. Moving to controls, we have a dial to change the different modes. And unlike some of the far more expensive offerings, the dial is actually large enough to easily use. I gotta stop myself because I spent some time training with this right before I finished recording this and small caveat again. Now, while the controls are easy to access, once mounted, that is no longer the case. The easy to see positions are now blocked by your optic and pick rails. And now look, my hands are too big to get to anything. And instead of spinning it, you gotta kinda roll your finger over it to get it to change positions. I was watching the 4MR Ranch video and he was explaining about how he was actually changing the setting like that. And I was like, 
bro, why, why are you doing that? That's kind of silly. Then I got it all set up and I was like, oh, oh, great. That's why. Now, at least the modes are also in a smart order though with Viz Laser off. Laser low, Illuminator low, laser and Illuminator low combo. A little bit of foreshadowing, but that's probably the only one you actually wanna use. Laser high, Illuminator high, and Illuminator and laser high. I like this a lot because it's like the same order all the way through, like it makes sense. Unlike some other high-end illuminators, it's not always the case. Like sometimes it's like a laser low, a high low illuminator combo, a illuminator high. It's just, sometimes the order makes no sense. So it's nice to see the modes, not in some sort of mystery configuration that you gotta memorize. Now, oddly, the knob also goes further. Wait, why? Why? To give you another off position and what? Uh, another, another unmarked laser position. I, I don't, I don't completely understand why. What? Uh, it hurts my brain. Just, I guess, just know that if you turn the knob all the way off by like rolling your finger over it, as we mentioned, it's actually on in an unmarked Viz laser position, which now I'm realizing is actually a bigger problem because it also turns on the LED, which also drains your battery. So ultimately then, just make sure visually that it's in an off position when you're done with it or, or just pull the battery. You know what, no, it's better practice. Just, just always take the battery out when you're done. <laughs> Ignore everything else I said. For mounting, we see an actual shocker here. Someone who seems like they know what they're doing. We see a large adjustment screw to fit any pick rail style you may throw at it, while also having a forward locking lug to keep it all locked in position. I don't know why all these budget branded companies can do all these complicated things with like lasers and all these other pieces, but then have the most Walmart branded mounts you could possibly come up with. Thankfully though, whew, thankfully, Laser Speed does this well. Do I think something that costs $1,000 should have a QD lever? Well, well, yes, I do. Hilarious though, I'm giving this Illuminator a lot of grief, but I really do like it. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of this Illuminator though, and actually go into the, the performance and see everything. And you're gonna see all the different pieces that kind of make that whole control knob, just makes, you, just makes you forget about it. For the first bit, I'll show you the Viz Laser, even though I think it's the most useless. Again, as we noted for controls, you can press any button once for momentary or press any button twice for constant. Here is the low power mode of the Viz Laser if you want to see its performance at night, which I have no idea why you would want to do that. Now there is a high power Viz mode that I couldn't figure out forever even reading the instructions until I watched the 4MR Ranch video. You gotta click it twice so it's constant on, then click three times to have the laser in high power. On the high power setting, it's just bonkers and everyone in town is probably wondering which rock show is in town. Here, let's just go to daytime where, yeah, <laughs> even the most insane of power settings is still not really all that useful. I'm telling you guys, infinite zero with your nods, with the IR laser, it is, it is the cheat code. Now for our next setting, we have our low power IR laser. This I actually like a ton. You have a laser mode, you can actually aim at things without it giving you an insane obnoxious bloom. I really like this mode because it felt like it was usable within close night vision ranges without completely obscuring the target. Comparing the laser to like a designate IRV, we can see how you can get a laser that just overpowers everything and blooms so bad that seeing what you're aiming at is basically impossible. So huge thumbs up for actually giving a toned down laser that actually makes <laughs> accurate shots possible instead of the brain dead hype bus of making the most powerful laser possible. I mean, it has those two if you really wanna use it. I'll, I'll show you. Let me show you the illuminator settings and I'll show you the high power that seem mostly useless, but some YouTube fart is gonna tell you that that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now we'll just click over our control. Just, we'll just click, we'll just roll this thing over. Now here we move into the low power IR illuminator. Here we get a nice power level that again doesn't overpower or autogate our nods to give an actual <gasps> gasp, usable illuminator in buildings or anywhere that has trees or walls. You know, that's another dumb thing we see a lot too. These super, super, super high power illuminators and lasers all shown in 
wide open fields. Turn one of those guys on with like trees in the way, you know, like in reality. And you start to see the stark difference between a real situation and YouTube marketing. Well, I guess I'll kind of admit it, I am, I am a little bit ranty today. Oh, now I think I skipped over this knob, but this is actually our IR illuminator focusing knob. Here we can adjust the size of the illuminator to be a nice flashlight size or tone it all the way down to be the same size as the laser itself to give free LASIK to our foes, I guess. This makes it really nice to hone the light to see a target further out, but I'm struggling to understand why as we're now outside of where the laser is even zeroed. In reality, the widest setting isn't wide enough, and I would really like a spill setting to be able to see more items in closer range. In reality, I don't need my illuminator to be laser-sized. I have a laser for that. It would be a lot more useful if the illuminator could widen out a whole lot further. Now, Villain Weapon Systems does some amazing things, like this diffuser I put on my D-Ball D2, that give you a different cap to go from spill to focused beam just by moving the cap to the side. Here, I put the same cap over the laser speed to see how it gives you that same focus beam and then also flood the entire area instead of just a small circle flashlight you're trying to use to scan all over the place. As mentioned at the start of the video, I think this diffuser is what I would really need to put the laser speed in like a number one or like top two spot for me. So hopefully Villain Weapon Systems can put something together to add some cool spill functionality to the setup. Oh, and a tape switch. <laughs> I had to use a different one of those also. Clicking over our control knob setting again, right? Is this right? There we go. Uh, we're next in the low power IR illuminator and laser combo. I found I really liked this setting because it seemed powerful yet balanced. The laser is visible and easy to see within the illumination while also not being too overpowered to bloom all over the place. I found this setting and the low power laser were my favorite setting as they just didn't blow out my entire field of view. It's kind of hard to explain without seeing it, but having so much illumination that your nods auto gate and you dim everything else, it's just, it's just kind of stupid. Plus you lose any sort of situational awareness because you're just getting absolutely blind with all that illumination and losing all of your peripheral night vision. But I got told when I made fun of all the passive aiming folks that I wasn't being nice enough. So this is, trying, this is me trying to be a whole lot nicer to them. But if you have full on brain damage or you're a YouTube reviewer of Illuminators, just know this thing can go absolutely crazy just for you. Let's do the high power settings. Here I clicked us into the high power IR laser. Good God. This defines exactly what I don't recommend. The laser can go out about 2,000 yards, sure, but it's so insanely bright that it's blooming off objects still at six or 700 yards, making your holdover almost impossible to judge. And you can just throw any sort of accuracy besides just keep shooting uh, into the toilet. Like some guys have a parallel zero and what that does is it basically lines up the barrel and the laser so they have the same offset no matter the distance. Let's say for this example, uh, I don't know, like one inch to the right off the reticle. Now look at this image. How in the world are you gonna see one inch to the right with this? It's, it's very silly. I question uh, very heavily anyone who's doing reviews and saying that's what you want and I highly recommend you question them also. Hilariously though, I did like the high power laser in CQB. It's so obnoxious that you don't even need an illuminator and you can light up an entire room with just this super bright laser. I'm sure your teammates would hate not being able to see anything except your laser, but hey, it's not half bad. But remember, we do still have an illuminator too. Clicking this one more time, we shift into illuminator high. Here the illumination, much like the laser, is a bit useless unless you're pushing out past 300 yards, which I can't see well with my 1x nods, so it's kinda goofy. Comparing the power, we actually see it's very similar to that of the D-Ball D2 if you want to know some comparative performance. By focusing the laser speed though, you can actually get higher brightness than the D-Ball by collapsing the cone further down dethroning the brick in terms of the brightest illuminator. So good news, if you're dying to have an illuminator that's too bright to use, you can save a few bucks and not have a two pound D-Ball D2 stuck on the end of your rifle. 
plus the crane plug on the laser speed actually works, so that's nice. The one on my D-Ball D2 is still stuck after like two years. Now, I do like the laser speed illuminator as an option for those rare instances, like illuminating a large warehouse or pushing out for a moment to get clarity on a further target. I do like that ability if I need it, but the magic of the D-Ball comes from the ability to diffuse the same light to give you a spill. Just having this bright tube isn't really that useful at all, and even shining it on a target, it actually, it actually makes it worse. Forumar Ranch noted this also, and I'm in agreement with him that the focus mode of the low power actually collapses the light down so well that you can see perfectly fine with it. Now though, there is one more setting that's actually designed to make our YouTube Excel min-maxer commenters happy, and that's the dual laser illuminator high. Here, the dual high mode is just bonkers. The laser is bright enough to be seen through the illuminator, but holy hell, I can't see anything besides the circle. So now I have a 40 degree night vision view collapsed down even further, absolutely decimating my situational awareness. This setup isn't viable at all until 300 yards plus when it's not blowing out my view. But then at that point, my laser isn't aligned at all with where that round's going, unless you're zeroing your 1x optic at like 300 yards. I mean, you could certainly do that and just shoot with your 8 to 12 MOA bloom, I suppose. It'll be, it'll be great. You'll do fantastic. The constant falsehoods being pushed by people about you having to need a max power, stupidly power, overpriced illuminator is it's getting to be a little bit obnoxious to me. I'll be honest with you. Whatever though, I'm getting way ranty at this point. That's the whole unit and all the different illumination settings and everything else. Let's go into some pros and cons now. And the big, big pro I wanna go over are the low power modes and the smart controls order. I loved both the low power IR laser and low power combo mode to give me functionality that works within the viewing range of my nods without blowing everything out. Even in tight CQB rooms, neither setting blows out the view and is that perfect balance of illumination. Having the controls laid out smartly means I'm also only a few clicks away from whatever setting I want, or I can slam all the way over if I'm suddenly in a large warehouse or open field if I need to spot someone on a far ridge. It kind of sucks that the control knob is so hard to use when mounted and why the control knob goes past the indicators. <laughs> I don't know, that's a mystery. But from a usability perspective, that low mode is just perfect. But then you have that high mode for those 0.1% of all the situations when you actually need it. Like it's, it's gonna be a rarity when you need it, but it's nice that it's there and every setting makes sense in its application. I am gonna die laughing when some turd goes into a CQB night vision class with this in high power and makes it impossible for everyone else to see literally anything. All right, the next big pro is the super, super nice elevation and windage, along with having everything slaved together. The IR illuminator and laser are so perfectly slaved together, and it's nice you don't have another thing you have to zero or that adds cost to the whole unit. The elevation and windage seems insane because it's actually quality. No slop in the settings and no special tools. Clean nice clicks and quarter mil increments. It's fantastic. This M6TR craps all over two to $4,000 units that just can't seem to figure out how to get this right. So big bonus to laser speed for nailing that as it can be a super pain in the rear to adjust elevation and windage in the dark with special tools. Now though, all things with pros should have cons and I did have a few, just a few, as I went through this and the main one, uh, the buttons all suck. From the top button to the touchpad, this one's for you, Josh, Josh, it feels like you're just pushing on sloppy bread. I mean, it works, but it sometimes doesn't and you don't know exactly why. The only one worth anything is this front button. Everything else should be avoided. Lately, I feel like we're seeing a bunch of weird places where things just fall apart, like on Somo Gear, how they can't figure out how to actually mount something to pick a tinny. The Achilles heel to this one is yeah, the buttons, they're, yeah, they're, they're so-so. Now though, at least we can easily fix that with an aftermarket switch. It's just something else you're gonna have to budget for also. Yay, buying more stuff. 
Now, the other con I mentioned is how this thing is just dying for a Illuminator spill diffuser. Having the Illuminator only get this wide means it's missing some key functionality you can add into other modern Illuminators. Having that focus beam than a splash setting would just be amazing. Again, I bet Villain Weapon Systems will save us, but one more time, you got a budget for yet another thing to make this Illuminator truly viable. Okay, in his defense, you do also have the budget for that in the D-Ball D2, so okay, I guess it's kind of a wash there. The last con is a silly one, but I hate it. There's an LED that turns on if you have it in any setting besides off. The LED is always on, even if the unit isn't, like I'm not pressing a fire button, but it's also so dim, I can't tell if it's on. It doesn't tell me if I left the IR on, just that I'm in a setting where it could be on, and it's constantly draining the battery. It's just a big head scratcher as to why it's there, and it's certainly not very helpful. I mean, it does get you in a good habit of taking out your battery, which is pr probably what you should do anyway. Interestingly, the, the hidden settings past the dial is actually the Viz laser mode, like I mentioned. So yeah, the LED would stay on if you're in the secret modes. So yeah, there's a lot of really, really good things going on here in terms of performance and in terms of weight and everything else. But there's also a whole bunch of head scratchers. So, so what are my final thoughts? I think the LaserSpeed LS M6TR offers some great Illuminator performance and options above its competitors, while also shaving an absolute ton of weight. The low power settings are just phenomenal, while still being able to swap to high in that rare situation that called for it. The cost of the unit makes some of the more oddball choices a little more frustrating, and to push the functionality of this unit, you need to buy a few aftermarket parts such as switches and diffusers to make it a ton better. So for me, it's a, yeah, I really like it, but the but being all the extra pieces you have to buy, some of them that don't actually exist yet. I did find that I liked it far better than the D-Ball D2, so I will say with confidence that you can save some weight and save some money and pick up this unit instead. Just hold tight for some diffusers to hit the market soon. Come on, villain weapon systems, you're our only hope. But I hope this review of the LaserSpeed LS M6TR was useful in your purchasing decisions. And I want to say thanks to all of our YouTube and Patreon members. You make it possible we can test all this stuff, see if it's worth your money, and I just love the community we put together. And I want to say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you think about this Illuminator and what your favorite setting mode is. I want to hear about it and if you can shoot out 800 yards with this thing in 1x nods. I want to hear all about it. All right, everyone, watch out. My wife watches these videos sometimes and I think she's gonna tell me that was a little bit ranty this time around. But yeah, good unit. I did, I did like the laser speed. It was cool that we got to test it out. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. There's the small additions you have to make. The, the, <laughs> the touch, touchpad is no good. <laughs> this little guy's good. I just hate having this huge amount of everything else just for this one small button I wanna use. I don't, I don't love that. And, and up here, like this is just right in my view. This doesn't make any sense. I can, all, all I see is my thumb. So it's just, it's just kind of weird. But, yeah, getting to work on the next stuff. So you guys have a good one. <laughs> you gotta go. There's no, there's, no cool, there's no cool gun shooting or things at the end of this one. I pro no, I promise. There's literally, like, all you have waiting for you is another airplane coming overhead. So if you hang out, you can just go. Just turn, just turn it off. There's no point in waiting for this. Like, it's coming. This is what we have all day long. Ah. Uh, it's like... Welcome, welcome to my life. Try to record with that every minute or two. Okay, <laughs> you gotta go.